A uh, ton of situations covered. Um, you know, today it happened again. We got wet ball work, which is really valuable. Uh, we always schedule practice based on their farmer's almanac. I make that joke with the players. They look at me like I got five heads, but it is really good work for us. Um, and then in front of the fans, it does create a different uh, element. I want to thank you guys from everything Chris and Greg said. It seemed like everybody handled it well. It looked like the fans handled it well in terms of the rules. Uh, so we'd like to continue to build on that. So I thought it was a, it was a real positive. Um, obviously, we, we got to make sure we're throwing the ball enough because on a wet day, we focused on running the ball. Um, and, and we need to be able to throw the ball to win as well as run the ball to win. And when you become one dimensional, that's not what we want and who we want to be. But, uh, but either way, it was, it was really good work and really good film. When you talk about throwing the ball, you had Dante Sintas in practice for a little bit more than a week now, and it has. How has he come along and also your impressions of him this year? Yeah, I think it's been good. You know, he's a proven commodity. He's done it in games before uh, against really good competition. I would say we got a group of guys that we knew coming into this fall camp, guys in the current program that had gotten better, some new guys coming in. Um, I would say it's it's one of those deals where there's a different guy or maybe a different two guys every day that's flashing. And I wouldn't say anybody has really kind of separated themselves from the pack yet. Um, but I do think there's a large group of guys that can play in games and we can win with. You'd like to you'd like for somebody to separate themselves from the pack a little bit more. James, obviously a lot of talk about Nick uh, nationally, but maybe not as much about Patron. Uh, how have you seen him progress through the summer now? We think we got two number one backs. That's how we treat them internally. I think the local media and the local fans and our team know how special he is. They're really good complimentary pieces because although they're both big backs, they have different running styles. Um, you know, I think, I think real football people nationally know all about him. Um, and I know how much our fans and our team and, and I know how much you guys as a media respect him as well. So uh, we love him. He continues to get better. He did some great things today. I think he's gonna have a big year for us. James, how do you balance um kind of being safe with a guy like Olu, a talent like that, and maybe not repping him as much with making sure that he's ready for the season? And also, what sort of opportunities does that open up for some of your younger kids that you could get a longer look at them? Yeah, I think you really don't make the modifications like we're making with Olu, unless a guy is like just truly, 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 you know, a proven commodity. And the reality is, Although you guys saw the modifications in a live scrimmage that were dramatic, the daily reps that he's getting, I mean, he's getting thousands of reps. So um, he's still developing, he's still getting better. You know, from everything that I know and have talked to, he was being projected as a first rounder. You know, I want to do everything we can to help him become a top 10, 10 pick, which I think he is in terms of not only a player, but a franchise guy in terms of how about how he goes about his business. The guy wants to be great in everything he does. He wants more reps. He's fighting with us for more reps. So he's going about it the right way uh, and he's practicing his tail off. It also is super valuable. The iron sharpens iron in terms of him and Chop going against each other every day. Him and Adisa going against each other every day. Him and Denai going against each other every single day. And the other area where he's getting the live work is the one-on-one -on -one pass rush that we do. That that is truly live, but it's a controlled environment, if that makes sense. So I, I feel really good about the plan that we have for him. And, and he's one of these guys, he's wired so right that he wouldn't misinterpret or take it the wrong way and he'll still maximize the reps he's getting. What about the guy to his right, Landon? We haven't seen him. Any updates on him? Yeah, Landon's got some bumps and bruises he's dealing with right now. As you guys know, I don't I don't I don't get into uh, injuries. 
In terms of just health overall, you mentioned last week, I think the phrase you used, you were able to two-spot and get different team groups. Say it one more time. I'm in terms, I think the phrase you used last week was two-spotting, where you're able to get different groups yes, going. Sir. So just in terms of overall health about, I guess, the middle of the camp, how do you feel like that is? Yeah, I thought we'd only be able to do that for about a week. We're still doing it. Uh, it's been huge. The thing that's been dramatic is we went back and studied the numbers. Our threes and fours, I think, have already doubled the reps that they got all last camp. Uh, so that's been really valuable from the development of our entire roster. And you just don't know how you're gonna, how long you're gonna be able to sustain it. We've been able to sustain it, uh, and it's gone well. You it sounded like you were gonna say something else. Yeah, no, just in terms of overall health at this point of camp, do you like where you're at? Yeah, really good. You know, there's one, obviously there's, there's two guys that everybody's talking about the D line. The one guy's been hurt since spring, just no one ever has asked me about him. He, like that's not new for us. Like Smith, Smith had this injury I don't know, six months ago. So that's not anything new for us. Uh, it just came out publicly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still a point. I think I think he's got a really bright future. I'm super proud of Smith. Graduated on Saturday, his family was up here, which was great. Um, so now it's the plan of getting him ready to have a huge year next year and get a second degree, which is phenomenal. Are you ready to name a starting quarterback? No, sir. I'm not. I'm, no one's asked me about the starting guard or starting Mike linebacker, or starting safety, starting kicker. You know, we haven't announced any of those yet. Tim Harrison's a guy who flashed a lot last season, like what he did in the spring. Has he been as consistent, and what has he shown you so far? Yeah, really, Trey and Keandre, I think, are proven commodities for us in games as well as uh, in practice. Um, and again, I think there's a, a group that we feel really good about, but I would say those two guys, in terms of being assignment sound, in terms of being able to make the routine play, being able to make the big play, um, I think there's a lot of confidence in those two. And again, I, I think there's a lot of confidence in that other group. There's just nobody that's separated on a consistent basis. James, you guys talked a lot about Theo Johnson's leadership in the spring. How have you seen that evolve heading into fall camp, and where has he made the biggest strides on the field? I think Theo talking to the guys on the team as well as our strength coach, strength coaches, it's it's uh, obvious that that was important to him, um, and that he took the next step. It was you talk to the players, you talk to the strength staff, like he was a strong leader all summer, both through actions and verbally. Um, so so he's been really good. Uh, from that perspective, and we need that. You know, we really do. We had some strong voices last year, um, so that that's going to be important for us. And he's done a nice job of it all offseason. What kind of preseason has Kobe King had? Really good. Yeah, really good. Um, you know, again, I think you know, almost like we have at the tailback situation. We got two guys that you know, we think are are really good tailbacks on a national scale, and we feel the same way at linebacker. I think. Yeah. With Kobe being younger to El than Elsden in terms of eligibility, uh, all those reps that he got this spring, I think were really beneficial. And then Tamir and Keon Wiley have also been able to get some reps there as well. Um, but he's had a really good, um, you know, really good summer and a really good training camp. He's leaner than what he's been. Uh, you look at him, he's like a ball of muscle. So it was hard because getting his weight down his body fat so low that that's challenging. So yeah, I think he's right around 239 right now, which I think is a really good weight for him. He's moving well, he's confident, he knows the defense, he's got command of the defense. He's playing fast and aggressive because of his confidence in himself and the defense. James, uh, at the tight end position, beyond those two guys who are established in Big Ten play, what's happening there in that third spot? It's been pretty important for you in your time. Yeah, we, I think Khalil Dinkins has had an unbelievable off season. Um, in the weight room. Still got to put a little, few pounds on. I think it's important for all those guys to be 250 or above. He's got to, he's got to resolve that. But uh, you talk to our defensive players, they feel like he's one of our better blockers. Uh, he can really run. I know talking to Theo this summer, he was giving Theo a run for his money in, the, in some of the speed work. Uh, he's really matured and grown up and he's had, he had a Phenomenal summer academically, which is probably where I'm as proud of him as anything. So, you know, we anticipate him 
you know, being that number three. Again, we haven't we haven't made any decisions on it yet, but he's working like it. And then there's a bunch of other guys that we're excited about, young players, um, you know, that are competing. You mentioned earlier about not wanting to be one-dimensional. Um, what do you kind of want to see from the past game for a couple a couple weeks left in camp to make some happens and all that? Uh, no, that was more specific to that one day. Uh, I've been pleased, you know, talking to Terry Smith and Coach Poindexter. They feel like our receivers have really taken a step um, and are much more competitive um, and more challenging for our DBs. We got, we got, as you guys know, we got really good DBs, and it has been a battle every single day. So um, I was talking more specific, um, you know, to the scrimmage the other day. But in general, obviously, we want to throw for a high percentage. We want to throw a ton of touchdowns. We want to limit interceptions. One of the things I talked to the quarterbacks about is would you prefer to throw for 90% in a game but throw three picks or would you throw for 65% and no picks? What's better? 65% and no picks. So it's really about the consistency across the board. You know, at, at linebacker, you have 16 tackles or 12 tackles but had three, you know, critical missed assignments or seven tackles and no missed assignments. What's, what's more valuable? That consistency is more valuable across the board. You're a field goal kicker. You make a 60 yarder, but you miss three 35 yarders. What, what's more valuable? The, the guy that can make the plays on a consistent basis and eliminate the plays that hurt the team. So, um, you know, so far so good.